this week it was revealed that in his first interview with police, Simpson had refused to take a lie detector test. His reason? It detects lies. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Simpson defense attorney Robert Baker argued that a dark spot in a crime scene photo was a, quote, mystery shoe print, suggesting that there were actually two killers. O.J. hopes this will support his theory that he did not act alone. <laughs> President Bill Clinton and Russian President Boris Yeltsin have made tentative plans to meet early next year. According to the White House, the pair will use the meeting to resume their ongoing debate, drinking versus pot smoking. <laughs> hey. The FDA has approved a drug used for anti-depression to help people quit smoking cigarettes. Although it should be noted, the drug is crack. So... <laughs> a top aviation watchdog group warned this week that the nation's airlines are vulnerable to terrorist attack. The biggest problem, apparently, watchdog groups pointing out to terrorists that airlines are vulnerable to attack. That's the... That's all right. Over the next two months, the murder... Uh, I'm sorry, after the, uh, over the next... What are they? Hey, yeah, <laughs> Over the next two months, the number of Border Patrol agents in Tucson, Arizona will double to 49. Meanwhile, the number of illegal aliens sneaking into the country will hold steady at 100 million billion. So... Did I screw something else up? Famed anthropologist Mary Leakey died this Monday at the age of 83. Leakey was buried near her home where she will rest in peace until some nosy anthropologist digs her up in a couple of... <laughs> That's a nice obituary for the lady. This week, renowned heart surgeon Michael DeBakey attacked the hypocrisy of Hollywood stars who oppose the use of animals in medical research and yet wear ribbons supporting the war on deadly diseases like AIDS. In response, animal activist Ricky Lake said, quote, but the red ribbon diverts attention from my gigantic ass. I... <laughs> if it wasn't for the red ribbon, people would, would notice my gigantic ass more. They... By wearing the red ribbon, less people... <laughs> well, a big seller this holiday season is Michael Bolton's Christmas album, This Is The Time. Happy birthday, Jesus. Hope you like crap. <laughs> Once again, it is Christmas in New York, and while that means angry shoppers and tasteless decorations... You can flip that card anytime you want. It also means something more. Here with a fresh perspective on the meaning of Christmas are the stars of the upcoming movie Beavis and Butthead Do America, MTV's own Beavis and Butthead. This week, security guard Richard Jewell, who had sued NBC over comments by Tom Brokaw suggesting that he was the Olympic Park bomber, settled out of court with the network for an undisclosed sum. Meanwhile, the FBI has a new 800 number for tips on the case, and curiously, the first call was from Mr. Jewell, who suggested that they check out Tom Brokaw. <laughs> this week, the chairman of the board, Frank Sinatra, turned 81 years old, and he was honored by having the Empire State Building lit in blue. Also in Mr. Sinatra's honor, the Empire State Building had the Twin Towers rough up the Chrysler Building. <laughs> Grocery and department stores across America have added reserved parking spaces for expectant mothers. Especially excited about this innovation are handicapped drivers who will finally get to park in someone else's space. <laughs> in a recent interview, actress Goldie Hahn says that she does not mind if the man she's married to cheats on her, explaining, quote, sexual experimentation is a basic need of all men. You can read more about Goldie Hawn's personal philosophy in my new book, 
Goldie Hawn, the greatest woman who ever lived. <laughs> and finally, the number one selling doll this Christmas is Tickle Me Elmo. And the least popular selling doll, you guessed it, Tickle Me Frank Stallone. <laughs> Jesus. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Weekend update with Norm MacDonald. McDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight, in an emotional press conference this week, Bob Dole announced that he was resigning from the U.S. Senate, where he had served for nearly three decades. Dole said he regretted leaving the Senate, but needed to focus all his energies on a goal many had once thought impossible, getting Bill Clinton re-elected. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Clinton administration has charged that the new Republican budget contains hidden tax breaks for big business and the wealthy. In response, Republican lawmakers said, Shh. <laughs> Arriving back in the U.S. after his week in London, O.J. Simpson was asked by a reporter why he hadn't spent Mother's Day with his children. A visibly annoyed Simpson replied, Idiot, I didn't spend Mother's Day with my kids because I killed their mother. <laughs> While in England, where he spoke at Oxford University, Simpson had defended actor Marlon Brando's criticism of Hollywood Jews. Later, from his island hideaway, Brando sent O.J. a telegram which read, You're not helping. According to this week's Star Magazine, Unabomber suspect Ted Kaczynski is still a virgin at the age of 53. This uh, isn't too surprising when you consider that Kaczynski's best pickup line was, My dirty wood shack or yours? <laughs> at the White House this week, President Clinton officially came out against same-sex marriages. What's more, the president said he is not too crazy about opposite-sex marriages either. <laughs> According to published reports, MTV News anchor Tabitha Soren has been romantically linked with journalist Michael Lewis. Soren denies the reports, claiming she doesn't have time for a boyfriend because she's too busy pretending not to be stupid. <laughs> It was revealed this week that mass murderer Richard Speck, while serving a life term in prison, was videotaped with hormone-induced breasts, snorting cocaine, and having sex with a man. The film was apparently made with prison video equipment and a $300,000 grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. <laughs> Tomorrow night on 60 Minutes, Dr. Cha Jack Kevorkian will sit for his first ever in-depth interview. According to producers, Kevorkian agreed to the interview only on condition that it be conducted by veteran correspondent Andy Rooney. Wait. Don't do it, Andy. It's a trap. It's a, it's a trap. In an interview in this month's Vanity Fair, actor Tom Cruise attempts to end, once and for all, rumors that he is gay. <laughs> While performing in New York this week to a packed audience, Yoko Ono shocked the crowd by tearing up a Bible. Most shocking of all, Yoko Ono performed to a packed audience. <laughs> this week, the FDA gave final approval to a device that prevents heart attacks by blasting the heart with a powerful jolt of electricity. If the device works properly, you will not have a heart attack. If it doesn't work properly, 
you will have a giant heart attack. <laughs> well, more O.J. Simpson news. On Friday, the Juice officially endorsed Bill Clinton for president, adding, adding, quote, I'd like to help him any way I can. To which the president replied, well, there is one thing. And finally, tonight, we at Weekend Update salute a fellow journalist on his retirement. John Tesh is leaving his job in entertainment tonight in order to concentrate on making horrible, horrible music. <laughs> we miss you, John. And that's the way it is. See you next year, folks. Have a good summer. Weekend Update with Norm MacDonald. Thank you. I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight, a shocking new development in the O.J. Simpson case. Late this afternoon, a high-ranking official in the Los Angeles Police Department admitted to Geraldo Rivera that the police did conspire to frame O.J. Simpson for the murders of Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. However, they called the conspiracy off when they got to the murder scene and found that O.J. really did do it. <laughs> On Thursday, Congress gave final approval to a sweeping new anti-terrorism bill. The new law permits foreign terrorists to be deported, limits federal appeals on death sentences, and allows for the immediate arrest of any Harvard graduate who lives in a dirty wooden shack. <laughs> well, earlier this week, actor Marlon Brando met with Jewish leaders to apologize for comments he made on Larry King Live. Among them, that, quote, Hollywood is run by Jews. The Jewish leaders accepted the actor's apology and announced that Brando is now free to work again. <laughs> In other show business news, it has been reported that superstar Madonna is pregnant. Although, personally, I find this a bit hard to believe. I mean, uh, Madonna isn't even married. It's like crazy. This week, a New Jersey woman, Rita Glusman, was charged with hacking her husband to death with an axe, cutting the body into pieces, and having a cousin dump them in a river. According to police, Glusman learned how to do this by watching the program Martha Stewart Living. <laughs> in a highly unusual ruling, the California State Supreme Court declared this week that O.J. Simpson attorney Alan Dershowitz is, quote, one ugly bastard. <laughs> In sports, distance runner Yuta Pippig set a record by winning her third consecutive Boston Marathon, despite suffering from both her period and diarrhea <laughs> throughout the 26-mile run. In addition, Pippig also set a record for causing the most spectators to make this face <laughs> at a Boston Marathon. And in basketball news, Magic Johnson was suspended for three games and fined $10,000 for bumping official Scott Foster. Said a distraught Johnson after the game, this is the worst thing that has ever happened to me. Well, for the second week in a row, Richard Gere's new film, Primal Fear, was number one at the box office, leading many Hollywood insiders to wonder, hey, uh, you think that gerbil story is true? <laughs> Magician David Copperfield has announced plans to open his own theme restaurant. The theme? I don't deserve my girlfriend. <laughs> In California, the State Justice Department has endorsed a plan that would update the term for a prostitute's customer from the traditional John to the new, more current-sounding term, Charlie Sheen. <laughs> and finally, this Thursday, businesses around the country will be celebrating the fourth annual Take Our Daughters to Work Day. 
Or, as producer Aaron Spelling calls it, Thursday. <laughs> that's all right. You don't have to do that. And that's the way it is, folks. Good night. See you later. Especially troublesome to Simpson is this final entry. Dear Diary, I have to run now because O.J. is here to murder me. <laughs> and also the guy who returned my glasses. I think he might murder him, too. <laughs> In North Carolina, a legislative panel has agreed on a bill which guarantees a murder victim's family two front row seats to watch the execution. The ruling has angered both North Carolina's death penalty opponents and death penalty season ticket holders. <laughs> and in Fairbanks, Alaska, a new high-tech emergency phone system will give operators the name and address of anyone who calls 911. Note to self, uh, don't make any more prank 911 calls in Fairbanks, Alaska. I know I have a pocket here somewhere. President Clinton this week declined an offer by Republicans to form a bipartisan commission to scale back annual increases in Social Security. Asked why he rejected the proposals, the president said, quote, Personally, I like the idea of a bipartisan commission. However, the two Chinese guys who gave me a million dollars, they didn't go for it. They just didn't like the idea. And in financial news, H.J. Hines has announced plans to lay off 3,000 workers. According to company spokesman, employees who refuse to budge will be turned over and shaken vigorously until they slide out. Much like ketchup. <laughs> well, St. Patrick's Day is almost upon us. Here with an editorial, my good friend Colin. He's a guy. He's a, he's a, he's a guy. The guy just shouldn't. He shouldn't drink. He's a good. He's a good guy. In Portland, Oregon, eight anthropologists are in court arguing the constitutional right to study a 9,300-year-old Native American skeleton which a local tribe wants to rebury. Though the case has merit, authorities are suspicious that one of the people involved in the suit is not really an anthropologist. It's... <laughs> this guy over here... In New York, police have arrested a local Queens man whom they are calling the Serial Fondler. Apparently, the man suffers from an intense desire to run up behind women and squeeze their buttocks. Psychologists call this impulse, quote, normal. <laughs> this week, the White House asked Congress to authorize... $175 billion in funds for highway construction, mass transit, and other transportation projects. The president plan has significant support in Congress, but many Washington insiders are wondering how exactly this benefits China. <laughs> in New Mexico this week, lawmakers passed a measure to abolish the state's 15-year statute of limitations on first-degree murder. <laughs> Note to self, cancel plans to return to New Mexico. <laughs> Asked recently what will set his new Batman film apart from its predecessors, Batman and Robin director Joel Schumacher said, quote, In this one, all the costumes will have nipples. <laughs> Note to self, do not watch the next Batman and Robin.
In Duluth, Minnesota, authorities suspect arson was to blame for a fire that destroyed a mobile home and killed 73 cats. The chief suspect so far? This dog. <laughs> Dogs don't care for cats much, you know. <laughs> Weekend update with Norm McDonald. Fake news, our top story tonight, late this week, President Clinton and Russian President Boris Yeltsin met in Helsinki to discuss the sensitive topic of NATO expansion. For his part, Yeltsin stood firm, saying he must do what is right for Russia, while Clinton also stood firm, saying he must do what is right for China. <laughs> On Thursday, in a stunning admission, the Liggett Group, makers of Chesterfield, Lark, and L&M cigarettes, acknowledged publicly that their cigarettes are addictive and do cause cancer. Hours later, the four other major tobacco makers, Reynolds, Philip Morris, Laura Lard, and Brown and Williamson, issued a joint statement saying, quote, Today's announcement comes as no surprise. Everyone knows Liggett cigarettes has caused cancer. <laughs> also this week, a California newspaper revealed that O.J. Simpson was awarded custody of his children mainly because a court-ordered psychological test showed that he is a loving father. It should be noted, however, that the same test also showed that he was a loving husband. <laughs> Following the surprise withdrawal of his nominee, Anthony Lake, President Clinton has chosen acting CIA Director George Tenet to head up the agency. Now all he needs is the approval of the House, the Senate, and this Chinese guy. <laughs> In Washington this week, the Supreme Court is having arguments on whether or not pornography should be banned from the Internet. According to veteran court watchers, eight justices are leading toward a ban, with one against. Gee, I wonder which one would be against a ban on pornography. Let me see now. There's... I don't even know. Meanwhile, at the University of Nebraska, computer scientists have developed a version of the Internet that is up to 100 times faster than the current system. According to analysts, those using the new system to log on to America Online will now be disconnected in three one-thousandth of a second. You ever get on the computer? Do you know anything about this? In Congress, members of the House Women's Caucus say prosecution of sex offenders must be the Army's top priority despite concerns of racial insensitivity on the part of investigators, which would be the second priority. Then I guess the Army's third priority would be defending the nation. That would, you know, that would be third. Well, this coming Monday is Oscar night, and three films, The English Patient, Secrets and Lies, and Shine, are locked in a tight race in the category, best picture, there's not a chance in hell I will ever see. <laughs> no interest at all in seeing those. <clears throat> a person who suffers two sharp, powerful blows to the head within a short period of time can suffer brain damage or even die. This, according to a new study in the medical journal, Duh. <laughs> This week, a London tabloid published the first exclusive pictures of Michael Jackson's baby, secretly taken by a guest at the King of Pops Neverland Ranch. Upon seeing the pictures, Michael said, This is not my baby. Then quickly added, I'm not saying he isn't hot. He's hot. It's just not my kid. I'm not saying he's a, he's a very sexy infant. It's just not mine. I would love to have sex with him. He's just not my child, is all I'm saying. This week, pilot Linda Finch marked the 60-year anniversary of Amelia Earhart's attempt to fly around the world by setting out on her own round-the-world flight. 
Finch took off Monday from the same Oakland, California airfield as Earhart and hopes to reach Europe by next Wednesday. By Sunday evening, if all goes well, she plans to have mysteriously disappeared forever. <laughs> In music news, Dr. Jack Kervorkian has performed and recorded a one-hour CD of his own jazz compositions for the flute. You know, Dr. Kevorkian, I've, uh, I've listened to your CD, and I've got some advice. Don't quit your day job, all right? You know, murdering old people? Stick with that. <laughs> Stay away from the flute and stick with the, uh, the murdering old people. This is my advice. A report by Assistant Treasury Secretary Jim Johnson shows that the arrest rate for church arsons is more than twice the national average for arsons in general. Note to self. Start setting fire to something I saw other than churches. <laughs> Earlier today, the biggest auction ever of Beatles memorabilia took place in Tokyo. Among the one-of-a-kind items on the block were Paul McCartney's birth certificate, a white Mercedes-Benz owned by John Lennon, and rarest of all, a photo of George Harrison not looking haggard. <laughs> Have you ever seen one when you think about it? And the British Sunday Times is reporting that Belgian doctors have accidentally cloned a human being. The human being? You guessed it. Frank Stallone. <laughs> well, Reader's Digest has released its 1997 list of the best and worst places to raise a family in the United States. The best place? Sheboygan, Wisconsin. While the worst place in America to raise a family, the Neverland Ranch. <laughs> At the 17th floor. Good night, everybody. We came up there with Norm MacDonald. Thank you very much. I'm Norm MacDonald. And now, here's the fake news. Our top story tonight. As new questions arise about Hillary Clinton's role in Whitewater, the president appears to be distancing himself from the first lady. Earlier today in his weekly radio address, the president insisted, Hey, I sleep with hundreds of girls. I can't vouch for all of them, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, the war of words between President Clinton and New York Times columnist William Sapphire continued to heat up. It all began when Sapphire called the First Lady a, quote, congenital liar. Clinton responded by saying Sapphire, quote, deserves a pop in the nose. Sapphire replied by offering to fight Bill Clinton, quote, anytime, any place. <laughs> the President answered, quote, how about right now? then hopped a plane to England and lit up a big fat joint. <laughs> Is the First Lady a compulsive liar, though? It's beginning to look that way. In an interview on last night's 2020, intended to promote her new book, It Takes a Village, Mrs. Clinton folded under tough questioning by Barbara Walters and admitted that, in fact, it does not take a village, and furthermore, that she was aware that it does not take a village when she wrote the damn book. <laughs> oh, my tie looks funny? Thanks there, brother. <laughs> I think maybe that joke had bigger problems than the tie, but... In an effort to raise money for his enormous legal bills, O.J. Simpson this week began marketing a video which attempts to prove his innocence. Should the tape not sell, Simpson has a backup idea, his very own video of the actual murders themselves. <laughs> In one of the most amazing stories to come out of New York's blizzard of 96, supermodel Claudia Schiffer trudged over a mile through waist-high snow this week in order to make it to a photo session. Even more amazing, she sleeps with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And in Boise, the Idaho State Medical Board has censured Dr. LeVar Withers after dozens of women alleged that he fondled them while their legs were up in stirrups. An angry Dr. Withers replied, Hey, if I'm such a monster, why didn't they just go to another dentist? <laughs> In business news, AT&T this week announced the first of 40,000 layoffs. The spokesman for AT&T said, you know anyone who needs a good spokesman? <laughs> and in California, Christian Brando was released from state prison Monday after serving nearly five years for killing his sister's boyfriend. Meanwhile, his father, Marlon Brando, ate nine pizzas. <laughs> Well, more bad news for Bill Clinton. This week, an appellate court ruled that Paula Jones can proceed with her sexual harassment suit against the president. Jones' suit is based on a 1991 hotel room encounter, during which she alleges that then-Governor Clinton dropped his pants and exposed himself. She is seeking $700,000 in damages, $100,000 for trauma after seeing the governor's penis, and $300,000 for each thigh. Officials at the Philadelphia Zoo report they have actually been able to preserve sperm from an endangered one-horned rhinoceros. The sperm will remain frozen at the zoo until Michael Jackson comes by with a check and picks it up. <laughs> This year's lack of snow in Alaska could help generate a surplus of moose next year because deep snow makes it harder for moose to search for food, which leaves them more vulnerable to wolves. Or so the Germans would have us believe. A three-year-old Texas boy remains in fair condition after being assaulted by the family's pet cougar. No one knows why the attack occurred, but, uh, hey, how about, uh, how about, uh, because their pet is a cougar? How about... <laughs> 47-year-old Adrienne Brown, wife of soul legend James Brown, died suddenly last week. Most shocking of all, she was not killed by James Brown. <laughs> and in Polk City, Florida, a man had his stolen car returned, but the cremated remains of his father, I say the cremated remains of his father, are still missing. Don't I know it? <laughs> uh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Across the nation this Monday, banks and government offices will be closed in observance of Martin Luther King's birthday. Meanwhile, at the Riverbend Maximum Security Prison in Nashville, Dr. King's assassin, James Earl Ray, will spend the day being raped continuously. <laughs> He's a bad guy, by the way, James Earl Ray, if you don't know that. <laughs> that helps. And now, Jesse Jackson. Finally, in U.S. News and World Report's list of the best and worst jobs for 1996 is out. Last year's best job, multimedia software consultant, was replaced by a new best job, bioindustrial engineer. And in the worst job category, last year's winner, crack whore, <laughs> has lost its spot. The new worst job is assistant crack whore. That's all for now. Thanks, folks. Good night. Good night.
Thanks, I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. Well, it is finally official. Murder is legal in the state of California. <laughs> Two hours after the verdict, L.A. police had their first solid lead in the hunt for the real killers. A new witness has come forward who saw three men fleeing the crime scene the night of the murders. Police have released this sketch and would like to hear from anyone who has seen these three individuals. On Tuesday at 1.15, the moment the Simpson verdict was delivered, Court TV scored its highest ratings ever. An hour later, the channel went out of business. <laughs> well, that covers the main developments in the O.J. Simpson case this week, and after all, other important things are going on in the world. Now more O.J. Simpson. <laughs> when Simpson trial juror Gina Rodborough returned home this week, her little girls were delighted to have her back. And no wonder, she lets him get away with murder. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Washington, Mayor Marion Barry praised the verdict as, quote, wise and just. <laughs> and he called upon people of all races to please get him some crack. The first Miss America, Margaret Gorman Cahill, died this week at the age of 90. A call-in vote will determine whether she'll be buried in a bathing suit or evening gown. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. And with the Pope in New York City, some of the New York City's greediest and most heartless con men are getting rich selling fake tickets to the Mass in Central Park. Don't I know it? Look at how... Look, look here. Look at how that is. Oh, yeah. And now, here to give us an overview... A brother and sister in Florida carried on a sexual relationship for nearly 20 years, and now a judge must decide what to do with the eight children that their incestuous union produced. Hey, how about keeping them the hell away from each other? How about that? <laughs> that up up? Here is the answer to last week's update news quiz. The world's sexiest man is the one on the right. <laughs> that's, that's the one on the right. So nobody won. So the jackpot is now up to $500. Well, the wrong... The long-running TV series The Love Boat is being made into a big-screen feature by New Line Cinema. The producers have announced that the entire original cast of Gavin McLeod, Bernie Capel, Fred Grandy, Ted Lange, Lauren Tweez, and Jill Whalen will have to pay $7.50 to see the movie just like everybody else. <laughs> In Oklahoma, sheriff's deputies are using police dogs to sniff for bodies buried on an 80-acre farm. The dogs have sniffed the ground for three days, but so far all they've dug up is another dog's ass. <laughs> to mark its 75th anniversary, General Mills will abandon its traditional image of Betty Crocker and unveil a new multi-ethnic Betty Crocker, whose likeness will combine the features of 75 different kinds of women. Here she is. <laughs> this week, supermodel Claudia Schiffer broke up with magician David Copperfield. Later, a devastated Copperfield wandered out onto the street and was hit by a bus. This according to the current issue of Things I Wish Really Happened. <laughs> according to a recent survey, the best tasting water in New York State comes from South Huntington on Long Island. And the worst tasting water comes from, from Lou Reed's Bong.
Oh, this just in. We take you now live to Central Park. Apparently, there's been a development in our ongoing coverage. Of what is Rita Sarducci, folks? Live from Central Park. And uh, finally, physicist Stephen Hawking, who is wheelchair bound and speaks through a computer voice box, was married earlier this month for a second time. You guys out there who can't get a date, start feeling sorry for yourselves now. <laughs> That's all for now, folks. Good night. Thanks a lot. Weekend update with Norm MacDonald. Thanks, I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight, following his shocking acquittal two weeks ago, O.J. Simpson vowed never to rest until the real killers of Nicole Brown Simpson are brought to justice. And the manhunt continues. <laughs> Meanwhile, this week, O.J. took girlfriend Paula Barbieri to see the erotic murder mystery Jade. Other moviegoers took the couple's presence in stride, though they did become uncomfortable when O.J. repeatedly shouted out, shouted out, You call that a stabbing? That's... <laughs> Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan has accused the National Park System of racism, claiming the agency deliberately undercounted the number of participants at his Million Man March. A spokesman for the Park Service denies the charge, saying, quote, our estimate is based on state-of-the-art aerial photography. We stand by our number. Heil Hitler. <laughs> Meanwhile, Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry attended the march and called it a beautiful display of unity and solidarity among African Americans. His only complaint, the complete absence of crack. <laughs> the Menendez brothers are back in court. They now claim that they shotgunned their mother and father over 20 times because they feared their parents possessed supernatural powers. <laughs> Though they now admit, looking back on it, they were, they were probably wrong. <laughs> An 83-year-old Wisconsin woman who survived in her broken-down car for eight days on just fruit juice and frost was rescued last week by family and friends, and they gave her a big welcome-home dinner. But in an ironic twist, they unknowingly served up as the main course, fruit juice and frost. <laughs> Polygram Records has acquired half of Entertainment Tonight host John Tesh's music label, paying Tesh $8 million for the right to distribute his new age music worldwide. If I ever decide to kill myself, that will be the last line of my suicide note. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> last Tuesday in Mexico's election for the regional assembly, leftist opposition party thugs burned ballot boxes, detained election officials, and threatened voters with violence. Mexican authorities are calling it their most successful election ever. <laughs> president Clinton was in Austin, Texas last Monday, the day of the Million Man March. The president said in a speech, I'm here to speak to you today because right now in Washington, D.C., there's like a million black guys. Less than two years after that horrific bus accident which nearly left her crippled, singer Gloria Estefan has been involved in a fatal boating accident in which a surfer was killed. Memo to self, cancel hang gliding with Gloria Estefan. Let me just, let me just cancel that out there. So I'll cancel. A Labor Department task force says it will crack down on sweatshops in New York's Chinatown where employees work 90-hour weeks for as little as 75 cents an hour. 
A spokesman for the sweatshop owner said, quote, that's all we can afford to pay. This is a sweatshop. We make sweat. <laughs> In Arkansas, a 25-year-old man has been arrested for going door to door attempting to trade sticks of dynamite for sex or drugs. <laughs> this disturbing case has people all across the nation asking themselves the same question. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Angry over the Atlanta Braves and Cleveland Indians' use of Indian caricatures as logos, Native Americans showed up at the World Series tonight. They chanted for hours to protest Indian stereotypes. Though it didn't help their cause any when it uh, started to rain. <laughs> With the World Series opening tonight between the Indians and the Braves, Native American groups are angrier than ever before about what they consider the racist nature of the two teams' symbols. Here with a comment from the Native Goes Flying. And finally this week, Jean Calmont of France turned 120 years, 238 days old, making her the oldest person who has ever lived. And though she can no longer shop for herself, see friends, or even get out of bed, she still has enough strength to say, Oh God, I want to die. <laughs> And that's all for now, folks. Thanks. Good night. With Norm MacDonald. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight, according to a report out this week, O.J. Simpson is still extremely angry that Robert Shapiro began writing a book while he was defending the football legend. However, Simpson is extremely pleased that he got away with killing his wife and that waiter. <laughs> this week, the New York City Taxi Commission named the ten worst cab drivers in New York City. Mohammed Zaman, Akbed Alab, Yasser Abdul, Ali Rakima, Malik Gasagi, Himyar Lakimid, Sarbit Karim, Jazi Hassan, Zakadan Nosagi, Thamud Abdul Nasir. And the second worst offender is Abdul Ahmed Zakhalili Bani Kavaligi Zadigi Hanganga Soli Lovely. Two 23 year old women in China this week have set a record living 12 days in a room with 888 deadly snakes. They now hold a place, a coveted place, in the Guinness Book of World Retard. <laughs> a female prostitute who was mistaken for a man spent 15 hours in the men's jail in Denver where she had consensual sex with two male prisoners making that the first time anyone at any time in any prison ever has ever had consensual sex. <laughs> Michael Gold, an unemployed drifter, has been stalking model Naomi Campbell now for two years. He has been screaming obscenities, spitting, throwing garbage, and threatening to kill her. Well, after two long years, Naomi finally gave in. The couple will be married in June. <laughs> How will the current government shutdown, as well as questions regarding the debt ceiling, affect the United States economy in a global sense? Economists are divided, with some arguing that any sign of U.S. stability will have a negative impact on bond markets, while others hold that the shutdown will be viewed as a sign that the U.S. is finally serious about balancing its budget. Here to guide us through the maze of complexity surrounding this issue is the chief macroeconomist at the Institute for Advanced Economic Policy, Dr. Anthony Holbrook. Dr. Holbrook.
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, apparently we've been the victim of a hoax here that uh, was obviously not Dr. Anthony Holbrook of the Institute for Advanced Economic Policy. Our sincere apologies. In publishing news, Magic Johnson has received a $5 million advance from Random House for his new book entitled, What You Can Do to Avoid AIDS. Chapter 1, Don't Have Sex with Me. Actor Luke Perry says that his departure from the cast of Beverly Hills 90210 this week had nothing to do with artistic or personal conflicts. It's just that he's 50. <laughs> In New Orleans, Antoinette Frank, an ex-police officer on death row for triple murder, said she knows nothing about skeletal remains that were found under her former home. But then, after thinking about it, she said, Oh, that guy, yeah, 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 he's the guy I killed and put under the house. <laughs> yeah, just uh, slipped my mind. That's uh, Sure, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, killed him, and then I, I put him under the house. And yeah, now I remember Kentucky Fried Chicken has announced its second annual Salute to Mother's Day greeting card contest. You all remember last year's winner, Two Mom. Roses are red, violets are blue. Eat lots and lots of fried chicken. <laughs> Hoping to impress a girl, Kevin Hall, 18 years old, stuck a sawed-off shotgun in his pants and blasted off his genitals. You know, I don't know the girl, but I'm guessing that uh, the stunt didn't work. <laughs> I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> For years now, the medical research community has warned that indiscriminate use of antibiotics would lead to the development of drug-resistant bacteria and the diseases long thought eradicated, such as tuberculosis, cholera, and even smallpox, might make a comeback. Are we facing a medical Armageddon? Here to lead us through the jungle of uncertainty and fear surrounding this subject is probably the world's leading authority on contagious diseases and the chief of the Division of Epidemiology at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, Professor Gunter Lamberg Karlovsky. Professor Lamberg Karlovsky. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, we, we seem to be the victims of some kind of hoax that was clearly not Dr. Lambert Karlovsky, and also, I must say, he was, he was totally different in the free interview, so once again, I, I apologize. Well, if I can be allowed a personal opinion, you know, I think Harrison Ford's new mustache works. And by works, I mean looks really gay. <laughs> In what is considered a remarkably short period of time, the head of the Federal Advisory Board, Dr. Peter Melman, has given speedy approval to a controversial new anti-obesity drug. It should be noted, however, Dr. Melman's wife is a fat pig. <laughs> Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry has prostate cancer, but the disease was detected early, and he expects a full recovery. Doctors say in no time, Barry will be up and around and smoking crack again. <laughs> Woody Allen is to be the subject of a documentary film which will follow his jazz band on its 1996 tour. According to its producers, the documentary will focus strictly on the parts of Allen's life 
that no one could give a rat's ass about. <laughs> a new book claims that Madonna once smeared peanut butter all over John F. Kennedy Jr.'s body and then licked it up. Which just goes to show you, Madonna's a whore. <laughs> And now here we go. Okay, and finally next Thursday, Americans everywhere will celebrate the holiday of Thanksgiving, or as turkeys refer to it, Murder Day. <laughs> and that's the way it is. Enjoy your Sunday, folks. Thank you. Weekend update with Norm McDonald. Thank you. I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight, 20,000 American troops are on their way to Bosnia, but President Clinton has vowed, quote, this will not be another Vietnam. Adding, for one thing, I won't be in England leading peace demonstrations and cheering on the enemies of our country. <laughs> in an attempt to reassure critics of the president's Bosnian policy, White House press spokesman Mike McCurry stress that the administration does not intend that America be the world's policeman. He did acknowledge, however, that the Marines had just pulled over the country of Brazil for speeding. <laughs> like Johnny Carson there for a second. <laughs> Beatle fans who play their new song, Free as a Bird, backwards will find a secret message by John Lennon. The message, this song sucks. <laughs> Former British Cavalry Officer James Hewitt, who was Lady Diana's secret lover, says he will never, ever disclose the contents of more than 100 love letters that she sent to him. This, according to Hewitt's new book, I Banged a Princess. After years of research, a team of biologists has succeeded in altering the genetic structure of mice to create a new breed of larger, hairier, more violently aggressive mice. They call their new creation the rat. <laughs> Federal officials have ordered trash burning plants to install safety guards after a worker in Maine was crushed to death this week when a conveyor caught his broom. Also, big signs will be placed on the compactors which say, if your broom gets stuck in the conveyor belt and you are about to be crushed, let go of the broom. <laughs> In the current climate of gun violence, the NBA's Washington Bullets have decided to change the name of their franchise. When several D.C. politicians were asked for their suggestions, President Bill Clinton said the presidents would be a good name, Senator Bob Dole said the senators, and Mayor Marion Barry said, I'll be with you in a minute right after I smoke some crack. You know, I'm not really crazy about this next segment, but uh, the thing is, I've been promising my mother I'd do it for some time now. Here now with a political con Jeske, six months after he scaled the White House fence to shoot the president. Mr. Majeski's future plans include scaling the White House fence and shooting the president. <laughs> In Niagara Falls, Arthur Curley has been charged with trying to make his girlfriend swallow a small brass bear, then urinating on her and setting fire to the oxygen tube that she uses to treat her emphysema. Read all about this kind of relationship in the new book, Men Who Make Their Girlfriends Swallow Brass Bears, Urinate on Them and Set Fire to Their Oxygen Tubes, and The Women Who Love Them. <laughs> A down-and-out O.J. Simpson, depressed that all of his money-making ideas have failed, has decided to go back to doing what he does best, killing people.
at the Davis County Jail in Utah. This in a judge has ordered that 17-year-old Wes Howard be placed in the general prison population after he complained of being unfairly segregated from the adult inmates. The judge came to this decision over the strenuous objection of Wes Howard's ass. <laughs> In a special ceremony sponsored by Publishers Clearinghouse, 16-year-old Amber Combingan has been awarded $10,000 for her tireless work to feed the homeless. Although the young girl said that she would trade it all in a second, if only she could get a shiny new Lexus instead. <laughs> and finally, this Christmas, Santa Claus will be starting a new look at up-to-date shopping malls around the country. They will now feature black Santas, Asian Santas, Hispanic Santas, and even Middle Eastern Santas. It is all part of a program to make little children cry. <laughs> and that's it. McDonald and now the fake news. Moments after the Bosnian peace treaty was signed in Paris, grenades rocked Sarajevo, killing six people. Asked if the renewed violence raises questions about the ceasefire, President Clinton hopped a plane to England and lit up a big fat joint. <laughs> King of Pop, Michael Jackson, who collapsed during rehearsals for a concert last week, has been released from the hospital. Doctors say his condition is stable and continues to improve, although he is still a freak. <laughs> At a tearful press conference Thursday, Utah Congresswoman Enid Waldholtz blamed her financial troubles on her husband, alleged embezzler Joe Waldholtz. The congresswoman says... She was blinded by love for Mr. Waldholtz, who, when they first met, claimed that he was not an embezzler and also that he was not a big fat guy. <laughs> In sworn testimony this week, Paula Barbieri admitted that she had broken up with O.J. Simpson the very night Nicole Brown Simpson was killed. Boy, that had to be a tough day for O.J., huh? First he gets dumped by his girlfriend, then Colombian hitmen kill his wife. <laughs> Man, that's... You gotta... You gotta feel for the guy. Former Oregon Senator Bob Packwood announced this week that he plans to start a consulting business on Capitol Hill. A spokesman, a spokesperson, rather, for Packwood's new firm, Maureen O'Donnell, said, Hey, hey, let go of my ass! <laughs> this week, CBS aired the Martha Stewart Christmas special, in which she demonstrated that with an old soup can, some used tea bags, some string and some sparkles, you can make a useless piece of crap. <laughs> Frank Sinatra turned 80 this week. Yeah. Frank Sinatra. And although the singer is said to be suffering from Alzheimer's, he had a typically festive birthday, singing a duet with a hooker and having sex with Tony Bennett. <laughs> Probably going to end up in uh, Jersey with a meat hook up my ass, but it was a good joke. All right. In Denver this week, postal clerk John Pitney startled co-workers when he arrived at work wearing a dress, a gorilla mask, and a strap-on dildo. <laughs> Most startling of all, he didn't shoot anybody. So. <laughs> and now, from Macy's in the Bronx...
After 30 years of non-stop touring, the Grateful Dead is finally breaking up. Fans of the group, formerly known as Deadheads, will now be called Homeless People. In a recent interview, Jane Pauley recalled how back in the 70s, she coined the phrase, Bad Hair Day. In another recent interview, Larry King recalled how back in the 70s, he coined the phrase, Bad Face Day. <laughs> Last Sunday's National Hockey League game between the Buffalo Sabres and the Tampa Bay Lightning was postponed due to record snowfall in Buffalo. Or so the Germans would have us believe. <laughs> Recent studies indicate the number of people getting the AIDS virus appear to be declining sharply. But it is important for viewers to remember one thing. Sex without condoms feels better. <laughs> Now I have to say this. It should be noted, however, I have no idea what I'm talking about. 18-year-old <laughs> Julie Wozczak will be going to Paris after winning an essay contest sponsored by the Dayton Daily News. She won for her essay, which was entitled, Why I Want to Go to Paris with Some Old Guy from the Daily Dayton News. <laughs> Dayton Daily News. Like that would help. Okay. <laughs> Hollywood prostitute Divine Brown has written a book describing in lurid detail exactly what she did with Hugh Grant. The book sells for $25, but for $35, she'll show you. <laughs> Last week, a hungry homeless man in a stolen truck led Pennsylvania and New Jersey police on a 100-mile chase before surrendering, when he was promised two egg sandwiches. When are we going to stop negotiating with terrorists? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. In Massachusetts, the state legislature will vote this week on whether to ban body-grabbing animal traps. Nervously awaiting the vote is the inventor of the body-grabbing trap, former Senator Bob Packworth. <laughs> Wrong Way Corrigan, the man who once flew all the way to Ireland by mistake, died this week at the age of 88. It was just like him, said his wife. He was trying to live. <laughs> he got it all wrong. And finally, next week, Christians everywhere will be celebrating Christmas, or as people born on December the 25th call it, screwed out of a present day. <laughs> And that's all for now. Good night, folks. Thank you. I'm Norm McDonald. And now the fake news, our top story tonight. The nation is still reeling from Thursday's bombshell announcement that Lisa Marie Presley has filed for divorce from Michael Jackson. According to friends, the two were never a good match. She's more of a uh, stay-at-home type, and he's more of a homosexual pedophile. <laughs> this... <laughs> this week, in a speech honoring Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., President Clinton said that if Dr. King were alive today, he would have supported the deployment of U.S. troops to Bosnia. Later, when asked how he could use the late civil rights leader's name in such a self-serving manner, Clinton hopped a plane to England and lit up a big fat joint. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Clinton is hard at work on Tuesday's State of the Union address, in which he'll focus on crime, education, and the economy. At the request of the First Lady, part of the President's speech will be huge lies. <laughs> This week on NBC's Dateline, three members of the Simpson jury explained their not guilty votes and argued that if Simpson had killed his wife, 
there should have been blood stains all over his gate, front door, and light switches. Also this week, Simpson friend Al Cowlings released his video, How to Get Blood Stains Off Gates, Front Doors, and Light Switches. And in Brentwood, O.J. himself was spotted manning a lemonade stand with his daughter, Sydney. Asked by reporters why sales were so poor, O.J. replied, beats me. And then he went back to cutting lemons with a giant knife. <laughs> well, bad news for ice cream moguls Ben and Jerry. This week, the Food and Drug Administration banned their newest flavor. Ben's back hair. <laughs> In an interview last week, administrators of the FAA, David R. Henson, explained why English is the only language used by pilots around the world. It turns out all the other languages are weird. <laughs> Can't even hardly understand most of them. John Goodman has announced that he will not be returning to Roseanne next year. So how will the show get rid of him on screen? Well, insiders now say that over the last few episodes of the season, Roseanne will gradually eat him. <laughs> A happy birthday to comic legend George Burns, who turned 100 years old today. You know, I don't know the secret to his longevity, but I, I think I speak for all of us when I say, I hope Polly Shore doesn't know it either. Barbara Jordan, the first African-American woman in Congress, died this week at the age of 59. Remarkably, singer James Brown had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Eric Etheridge, editor of George Magazine, has quit over policy differences with the publication's editor-in-chief, John F. Kennedy, Jr. Translation... They're both banging the same receptionist. <laughs> Finally, legendary pool hustler Minnesota Fats passed away Wednesday. You know now he's probably up in heaven, racking them up for a game with St. Peter. Or maybe he's in hell, where demons nod his flesh and the agonies of the damned never cease. Either way, he'll be missed. And that's all for now, folks. That's the way it is. Big with Norm McDonald. Thank you. I'm Norm McDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight in a startling reversal. Kenneth Starr announced yesterday that he would not resign as Whitewater Special Prosecutor, and that now he intends to stay on until the investigation is completed. This new development apparently did not trouble a confident President Clinton, who still plans to resume making conjugal visits to Susan McDougall. <laughs> this week in Moscow, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright and Russian President Boris Yeltsin sat down to discuss the delicate issue of NATO expansion. On emerging from what was described as a tense meeting, Ms. Albright said, quote, for this, I traveled 5,000 miles to meet with some drunken Meshuggah. I'm my worst enemy. I wouldn't wish this. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Indogate scandal continues to widen. Internal Democratic National Committee records now show that fundraiser John Wong was responsible for bringing two Chinese businessmen to the White House for a $180,000 coffee with the president. That works out to $90,000 a cup of, for a cup of coffee. Although, in the president's defense, the coffee was Starbucks. So, <laughs> Starbucks is a little pricey. <laughs> also, this week in Washington, several prominent Democrats joined Republicans in pleading with Attorney General Janet Reno to investigate fundraising abuses. 
and also to shave. <laughs> At a book signing in New York this week, Fred Goldman once again offered to forget the millions owed to him by O.J. Simpson if he would simply admit to the Brentwood murders. A visibly annoyed O.J. responded, Why in the world would I do that when I have no intention of paying you anyway? <laughs> After American Airlines decided this week to cut fares by 50%, the four other major airlines said they would match the bargain ticket prices. Also fighting to stay competitive, discount carrier ValueJet announced that it will now accept stolen credit cards and bad checks. <laughs> Michael Jackson has reportedly stepped right into his new role as a dad, spending many hours a day with his newborn son, doing the changing, the burping, even the breastfeeding. So, that's nice when a, when a fella does that. In Wisconsin, students at Menominee High School are desperately fighting efforts by the politically correct to change their team nickname, The Indians. Already, opponents of the name have rejected the student's first compromise, the Drunken Indians. <laughs> they feel that's almost worse in a way, you know. <laughs> Bessie the Cow, the most famous bovine citizen of San Antonio, Texas, is now listed in Ripley's Believe It or Not. Left with Norm MacDonald. Thank you. I'm Norm McDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight. After initially vowing never to rest until his wife's killers are brought to justice, O.J. Simpson this week changed his pledge slightly. He now vows to have sex with hot-looking models. Simpson had been discussing marriage with girlfriend Paula Barbieri, but reportedly she has called the wedding off. Her fear was that if they married, she would be brutally murdered. <laughs> and then, and then someone would try to pin it on O.J. So. The actor who appeared in commercials for many years as the Marlboro Man has died of lung cancer. Asked if he contracted the disease by smoking, a spokesperson for the tobacco industry responded by saying, What's that behind you? Then ran away. <laughs> At the University of Massachusetts last week, a team of biologists created a mouse with a gigantic human ear sticking out its back. Afterwards, the triumphant scientists looked at each other and said, What the hell did we just do? What kind of a crazy notion was that? It's a, some kind of a mouse with an ear sticking out of it. After 15-year-old Peggy Young of Irwin, Tennessee, was caught skipping school, authorities sentenced her mother to three days in jail. So to all you kids out there, remember, party at Peggy's house! Talk show host Ricky Lake has announced that she will finally publicly apologize for her role in a destructive anti-fur demonstration. Then she will eat a huge can of frosting. <laughs> Daytime TV talk shows have come under fire recently, with even former Secretary William Bennett attacking them for their vulgarity and celebration of deviant behavior. Here with a comment now is Phil Donahue. Phil. Well, it has finally happened. <laughs> the Sally Jesse Raphael show has replaced Donahue in several major markets, including New York, leaving many of us not a little unconcerned about where we are headed as a society. <laughs> Joe, average, is sitting there with his beer. 
<laughs> he's got his remote control and he's watching Sally, Jesse, Raphael, and Jerry Springer, and Richard Bay, and Jenny Jones. <laughs> And I mean hard copy and current affair and American gladiators and Charlie's Angels bionic woman and, uh, you know, meanwhile, meanwhile, we've got a Republican Congress and the generals in the Pentagon are building B-1 bombers and flag is flying everywhere. It's the 4th of July and mom and dad and Yankee Doodle. I'm a Yankee Doodle dandy and God's in his heaven. All is right with the world. And meanwhile, blacks can't register. The Cuban missiles are pointed at our shores, and ketchup is a vegetable. Well, well Phil, I, I don't think you can blame all that stuff on the Sally Jesse Raphael show, do I? Norm, you Republicans... You whine more than anyone I have ever seen. I mean, come on! <laughs> They're up there in their ivory towers with their Cadillacs and riding mowers and your big screen TVs and you're watching Sally Jesse Raphael. If you cannot stand the heat, my dear good man, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> Caller, are you there? Whoa, 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 we're taking calls? <laughs> is the caller there? Hi. Phil, this is Sally Jesse. No. I just want you to know that I'm an admirer of yours, and I, I hope there are no hard feelings. But, I mean, caller, <laughs> are you not being more than a little unpatronizing? We started Donahue in Dayton, Ohio... <laughs> In... I'm sorry, Phil. That's my other line. Hang on. <laughs> I hate that call waiting, huh? <laughs> it is more than a little annoying. I'm sorry, Phil. Look, I'm going to have to take this call. Are you going to be there for a while? No, no, no. He won't be here. No. I guess not. No, he's got to go. Well, anyway, keep your chin up. Uh, what a bitch. <laughs> Phil Donahue, everybody. Phil Donahue. Well, HBO has finished casting its new movie about the talk show wars entitled The Late Shift. Tapped to play Jay Leno is Daniel Roebuck. The part of David Letterman will be played by Michael Higgins. And the part of Arsenio Hall will be played by Arsenio Hall. Cowboy legends Roy Roger and Dale Evans launched an internet site on the World Wide Web yesterday so hackers can learn more about the Western duo. The most asked question so far, hey, aren't you guys dead? <laughs> In baseball news, Yankee captain Don Mattingly may be headed for Japan. Sources say that he's excited about the chance to play overseas, particularly in a league where he would have the biggest hog. <laughs> in an interview out this week, Demi Moore says she would like to have another baby, this time a boy, to go along with her three daughters and two huge breasts. <laughs> In the mating ritual of bees, the male follows the female around, biting, slapping, and screeching until she lets him have his way with her. Nearly every time a male orangutan encounters a female, he rapes her. Among sea otters, males often grab a female snout with their teeth or claws and drown her while attempting to mate. These stories and much more in the new book, I'm Not So Bad, by former Senator Bob Packer.
A uh, new airport planned for San Diego would actually be located three miles out in the Pacific Ocean, built on 40 by 20 foot floating cylinders. It's all part of a plan by city officials to have a huge disaster. <laughs> Last week, Wayman Harold Lyons, one of the FBI's most wanted fugitives, was arrested at a family reunion in Georgia. And if that wasn't bad enough, just before his capture, he was forced to spend two uncomfortable hours with a bunch of relatives he rarely sees. <laughs> well, America has spoken on that one, Jim. Well, next Tuesday is Halloween, or as evil old people know it, Razor Apple Day. <laughs> Okay. It's fun to pretend. Hey, that's the news, folks. I gotta go. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Norm MacDonald, and I'll be there for you. Well, the trial of the century is over. Late yesterday, the fate of O.J. Simpson, the most famous murder suspect in United States history, was placed in the hands of the jurors. They must now decide whether to free him or get all their heads cut off. <laughs> Testimony during the final week provided some spellbinding moments. In a brilliant move during closing arguments, Simpson attorney Johnny Cochran put on the knit cap prosecutors say O.J. wore the night he committed the murders. Although O.J. may have heard his case when he suddenly blurted out, Hey, hey, easy with that. That's my lucky stabbing hat. <laughs> In the course of his summation, Cochran also brought up Detective Mark Furman, calling him a, quote, genocidal racist and comparing him to Adolf Hitler. Furman later responded, After all the things he said about me during this trial, it's a little late to start sucking up now. <laughs> Meanwhile, Furman, who was expected to face disciplinary action by the LAPD, may get off lightly. Under the terms of a controversial plea bargain, the charges against him have been reduced to, quote, one count of using the word darky. <laughs> well, <laughs> the much talked about film Showgirls opened this week, and here's my review. Basically, a high budget porno film, Showgirls is a thinly veiled excuse to show lots of naked buttocks, legs, and breasts. On a scale of one to ten, I give it a ten. <laughs> Texas millionaire J. Howard Marshall may have died two months ago, but as we see here, he and wife Anna Nicole Smith can still enjoy a romantic evening at home. <laughs> In Tennessee, police have arrested two teens with a computer for attempting to hook into a phone line at Republican state headquarters. The teens say they wanted free internet time as well as information on how to keep down the underclass. <laughs> and in California, a new restaurant is opened exclusively for dogs. Their specialty? A fried chicken dinner, said to be scrotum-licking good. <laughs> Former Wilson Phillips member Carney Wilson's new talk show kicked off this month. According to Carney, her show will be different from the others in that guests will be treated with respect and dignity. And then she will eat them. <laughs> and now a new feature on... Remember Twelve Angry Men, the classic courtroom drama? Well, the first film about the O.J. Simpson case is in the works, 
It's entitled, Nine Angry Black People, Two Scared Asians, and a White Guy Who Hasn't Spoken Since Rosa Lopez. <laughs> In Carlsbad, Texas, a tanker truck crashed into a prison bus, injuring 16 inmates. Doctors say it will be at least two weeks before the men are up and around and raping each other again. <laughs> America's best-known atheist, Madeline Murray O'Hare, is missing and hasn't been seen for weeks. Her family is asking everyone to not pray. <laughs> and in music news, number one on the college charts this summer was Better Than Ezra. And at number two, Ezra. Meanwhile, Elton John continues to deny rumors that he is engaged to his tennis racket. <laughs> Finally, folks, next week, Jews everywhere will be celebrating the holiday of Yom Kippur. Or, as non-Jews refer to it, Wednesday. <laughs> and that's all for now, folks. Good night. Weekend update with Norm McDonald. Thank you, I'm Norm McDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight, according to the latest CNN poll of Iowa voters, Steve Forbes has pulled ahead of Senator Bob Dole in the race for Republican presidential nomination. However, he still trails both Ross Perot and John DuPont in the race for craziest rich guy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Republican hopeful Phil Graham says that Bob Dole should not get the nomination because he backed President Clinton's plan to send troops to Bosnia. Dole responded that Graham should not be nominated for president because, well, look at him. Take a gander at the fella. <laughs> More questions about Hillary Rodham Clinton's truthfulness. In an interview this week, the First Lady claimed that she won the woman's 100-meter dash at the 1956 Olympics <laughs> and that she had an IQ of, quote, over 700. When it was pointed out to her that these uh, were not especially good lies, Mrs. Clinton responded, I know, I have a problem. And then... Added, I invented the formula for 7-Up. <laughs> Last week, Magic Legend, or Basketball Legend, Magic Johnson. <laughs> Last week, Basketball Legend, Magic Johnson, rejoined the Los Angeles Lakers. Four years after learning, he was HIV positive. NBA doctors have assured the league's players that they have absolutely nothing to worry about. As long as when they are guarding Magic, they remember not to have sex with him. <laughs> And late today, rescuers intensified their search of shark-infested waters off the Dominican Republic for those still missing after the crash of a chartered 757. Also joining the search, sharks. <laughs> Last Sunday, during halftime at the Pro Bowl, New York police officer Michael Valino, who had been coached in place-kicking by the New York Jets, missed a 35-yard field goal, thus blowing his chance to win a million dollars. Experts said his chief mistake was being coached by the New York Jets. <laughs> that was it. In his civil court deposition this week, O.J. Simpson denied under oath that he ever punched, kicked, or slapped his ex-wife, Nicole. Oh, great. As if O.J. isn't busy enough tracking down the real killers, now he's got to track down the real wife beater, too. It's... This guy... This guy be crazy. Hmm. 
You know, I'm like, well, more bad news for ice cream moguls Ben and Jerry and their continuing battle with the Food and Drug Administration. This week, the FDA banned their newest flavor, Stuff from Ben's Beard. <laughs> A meddling bureaucracy wrecking that. And in Louisiana, Amtrak has agreed to drop its speed limit from 75 miles per hour to 69 following a meeting between train safety experts and giggly high school kids. <laughs> Stephen Simmons, the Pennsylvania man who smoked 800 cigarettes in under six minutes, has earned himself a coveted place in the Guinness Book of World Records. The record? World's most massive heart attack. <laughs> Well, at a local town meeting in Montpelier, Vermont last week, representatives from the McDonald's Corporation, who want to put a re restaurant in a historic district, were booed by angry residents. But they were cheered by the town fat guy. <laughs> Every town has one, the town fat guy. In Fort Pierce, Florida, many Bell South customers will no longer pay long-distance phone rates for nearby calls, but will instead be charged with a flat rate of 25 cents. Or so the Germans would have us believe. <laughs> Today in New York... The world's best chess player, Gary Kasparov, will challenge the world's best chess playing computer, the IBM 9000. No matter who wins, man or machine, one thing is certain. No one gives a crap about chess. <laughs> And finally, in entertainment news, ex-Playboy centerfold Anna Nicole Smith has filed for bankruptcy. And saddest of all, she slept with this guy for nothing. Okay, folks, that's the way it is. Good night. Weekend Update with Norm MacDonald. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Norm MacDonald. Now, here's the fake news. Our top story tonight, following his poor finish in the Iowa caucuses, Texas Senator Phil Graham has withdrawn from the presidential race and will soon, will soon announce his full backing and support for first-place finisher Bob Dole. In response, Dole said, I am screwed. <laughs> In Whitewater News, federal regulators quizzed Hillary Clinton at the White House this week and gave her a perfect score on the lying section. She's a dirty liar. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Clinton turned flood-damaged sections of the Pacific Northwest this week and promised that every flood victim will receive meals, blankets, and pup tents. Meanwhile, millionaire Stephen Forbes promised every flood victim a case of champagne and a rare Austrian music box. <laughs> hey, more controversy for Minister Louis Farrakhan. During his recent trip to Iran, the Nation of Islam leader said to reporters, you can quote me, God will destroy America by the hands of Muslims. And then, in the most shocking part of his statement, Farrakhan added, Happy President's Day, everybody! <laughs> Speaking out against the new Pentagon policy, President Clinton has vowed to keep HIV-positive soldiers in the military. Many in Congressmen wanted them discharged, arguing that their presence in the armed forces will make our enemies afraid to fight wars with us. <laughs> Earlier this
this week, the Food and Drug Administration gave approval to Nicorette Chewing Gum, an over-the-counter aid for those trying to quit smoking. Next, the agency will rule on another addiction-fighting product. The title of that one is, I Can't Believe It's Not Crack. You know where there's great crack is Detroit. Now, you hear about it, but you got to really try it. In the former Soviet Union this week. Oh, oh, there's a phone call here. Here I have a phone. Let me see now. Who would this be? Hello? Hey, Norm, what's up? It's OJ. OJ, hey. Hi, OJ. Hey, what have you been up to? I just got back from the movie. Oh, the movie. What did you say? Beautiful girls. Oh, yeah. Do you, oh, yeah. Who's in that again? Oh, you know, Uma Thurman, Lauren Harlan, Mira Savino, Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell's in Beautiful Girls? <laughs> I know, Norm. I was nonplus myself. Anyway there, Juice. Hey, uh, how's it going with the, uh, you know, the, the manhunt there for the, for the killers? Oh, Norm, don't ask. Uh, not good, huh? Well, that is an understatement. I'm no closer to finding the real killers today than I was when I started. It's like they vanished into thin air. Oh, well, give it time there, O.J. You know, it can't be that bad. Oh, believe me, it is that bad. Sometimes I feel like I might as well shut down the whole investigation. Oh, come on now. Hey, did anything ever come out of that lead you, uh, you picked up there about the shadowy figure leaving the crime scene? No, you're not going to believe it. It turns out that was me. <laughs> uh, well, so I guess that's a dead end, huh? Uh, well, hey, how about that guy that was seen running back to your house by uh, limo driver Alan Park? Oh, right? guess what? That turns out that was me also. Oh. <laughs> well, what are you going to do, huh? Nothing you can do. Sometimes you just have to laugh. Anyway, Norm, <laughs> while I have you here, I was going to ask you a favor. Oh, yeah, sure, Juice. What is it? Oh, I produced a video dealing with some of the inconsistencies in the evidence, and I've been having trouble getting the 800 number out on the airwaves. Really? I'll, uh, I'll put it out. Okay, that would be great. It's 1-800-555-0165. Oh, okay, that's uh, 1-800-555-0165? Right, 1-800-555-0165. Okay, 1-800-555-0165. Okay. Uh, hey, what's the video cost there, O.J.? Was it like a hundred bucks? Oh, no. It's twenty-nine ninety-five. Twenty-nine ninety-five? Good Lord, that's nothing. Yeah, well... We're practically we're... giving it away. We're trying to price it so that the average person can afford to buy it. Well, O.J., the question is not can the average person afford to buy it. The question is, can the average person afford not to buy it? Well, we think it's a quality video. Well, the price is certainly right. Hey, uh, let me ask you a favor, uh, O.J. Can I give out that number one more time? Sure. Okay, then. That's 1-800-555-0165. Right. Okay, Norm, I'm going to let you go. Okay, Juice. Hey, take care, buddy. O.J. Simpson, everybody. O.J. Simpson. O.J. the Juice. Well, in a sworn deposition this week, O.J. Simpson claimed that he never, ever beat, choked, or hit his ex-wife with a closed or open fist. Luckily for O.J., lawyers forgot to ask if he'd ever cut her head off. According to DEA officials, Colombia's President Ernesto Samper is the target of a formal indictment charged with accepting $6 million in Cali cartel drug money to finance his election campaign. In Colombia, the legal limit on drug money contributions, of course, $5 million. So he was... <laughs> in entertainment news, there are reports that actor Charlie Sheen and model Donna Peel are splitting up. You know when two people like this separate, there's really only one winner. Heidi Fleiss. <laughs> See, that's, uh... 
With peanut consumption in the United States down 10%, the Peanut Advisory Board has decided to launch a $600,000 publicity campaign. Most of the funds will go towards spreading ugly rumors about almonds and cashews. <laughs> That's not right, huh? <laughs> Finally, some good news for Steve Forbes in his recent sputtering presidential campaign. This week, he picked up the endorsement of Forbes magazine. <laughs> Medical researchers at Duke University have found the human body's internal stopwatch. So, if you've lost an internal stopwatch, please contact Duke University at the address below. <laughs> there was an unusual prison escape this week in Washington, D.C., where two inmates hid in the back of a garbage truck and were dumped in a landfill. The two men, covered in filth and garbage, remained at large for nearly three days by convincing people they were Mickey Rourke and Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> Under a new uh, ordinance, exotic, nude, and topless dancing will be banned in any establishment selling alcoholic beverages in the city of New Iberia, Louisiana, or as I now refer to it, the most horrible place on earth. <laughs> A celebrated fertility statue, which many believe has the power to make women pregnant, began a nationwide tour this week. The hundreds of women who claim it caused their pregnancies are of different ages, races, and religions. But they all have one thing in common. They are all dirty, dirty whores. <laughs> dirty, dirty whores. Okay. Hey, finally, a guy used to work here, Adam C. Oh, <laughs> Weekend update with Norm McDonald. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Norm McDonald, and now the fake news, our top story tonight. After devastating losses in this week's Super Tuesday primaries, a humiliated Steve Forbes has dropped out of the presidential race. Reportedly, Forbes was so despondent that he was overheard to say, I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pat Buchanan has warned that if frontrunner Bob Dole chooses General Colin Powell as a running mate, his followers will march out of the Republican convention. Later, Buchanan admitted that actually his followers march everywhere they go. <laughs> In a Michigan courtroom this week, Dr. Jack Kevorkian was acquitted of murder charges after jurors agreed that he had made a compelling argument for assisted suicide. <laughs> well... Chelsea Clinton turned 16 a few weeks ago, and apparently her father has been teaching her to drive. Early reports say that under the president's tutelage, the first daughter has become exceptionally good at cruising for chicks. <laughs> According to a Senate committee on violence, Denise Brown has done more to bring attention to the cause of battered women than any other person. Well, almost any other person. <laughs> Once again, O.J. gets the short shrift. And in business news, this week Kmart introduced its new credit card, and already the chain has been swamped with applications. So if you apply for a Kmart credit card and are turned down, kill yourself. <laughs> a new study has found that cheating is up dramatically on many of the nation's best college campuses, and, quote, students who cheat and get away with it continue to cheat into their adult lives. So says Rutgers University professor... 
Don McCabe. <laughs> Don McCabe is the feller's name. In Maine, a dog trained to dial 911 successfully noticed, notified paramedics after its owner's oxygen mask became loose. It was a close call, however, as 911 operators had trouble locating the address. Woof, woof. <laughs> they... <laughs> In Little Rock, Arkansas, a consumer group is proceeding with a petition drive to get a proposal on the November ballot that would exempt food from state sales tax. Or so the Germans would have us believe. Only weeks away from parenthood, Pamela Lee Anderson and her husband, rocker Tommy Lee, are considering names for their new baby. If it's a girl, they'll name it after the mother and call it Pamela, and if it's a boy, they'll name it after the father and call it Lucky Bastard. Scotchmen are, are tight with a penny. Well, Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry says he has devised a money-saving plan that would close the district's Lorton prison and transfer its 7,000 inmates to private lockups. One hitch is that the financially strapped district doesn't have the startup money to implement the plan. Another hitch is that the guy who devised the plan smokes crack. <laughs> so, Two hitches. Well, the results are in for 1995, and once again, Microsoft CEO Bill Gates is the richest man in America. Gates says that he is grateful for his huge financial success, but it still makes him sad when he looks around and sees other people who have any money whatsoever. Last week in Colorado, 71 guns were traded for Denver Nuggets basketball tickets in a program called Operation Ceasefire. However, in a sad example of just how tough it is to stop the violence, earlier today, two people were stabbed to death with Denver Nugget tickets. <laughs> The U.S. Public Health Service has begun using CIA spy technology from the 70s to detect tumors in women's breasts. Doctors can now determine if a breast has a cancerous and also if it has been squeezed by a communist. <laughs> well, in a recent interview, Christopher Reeve said that Robin Williams' comedy helped convince him to go on living. He then added that Polly Shore's comedy made him pray for the sweet release that death would bring. <laughs> Last year, German shepherds were rated the nation's most effective police dogs by far, sniffing out more than $100 million worth of illegal drugs. Or so the German shepherds would have us believe. <laughs> Technical glitch of some sort there. <laughs> and in Independence, Missouri, a library that was to be the second stop for an exhibit called Banned Books as Art has decided to ban the exhibit. Librarian Fran Murray, who personally ordered the ban, said she has nothing against any of the books. She just loves irony. <laughs> and finally, on a sad note, the entire nation joins us here at Weekend Update in mourning the death of comic legend George Burns. Let this be a lesson to all you kids out there. Smoking kills. <laughs> and that's it. See you next week, folks.
This week, after 50 hours of failed budget talks with Bill Clinton, a frustrated Bob Dole said, quote, we ought to have a new president, and added, and he should be a really, really old guy. In other political news, Texas billionaire Ross Perot announced this week that if his party wants him to run for president, he will. According to Insider, it is the first step in Perot's plan to waste the last few years of Bob Dole's life. <laughs> Yesterday on Rivera Live, Cato Kalin made the startling admission that he now thinks O.J. Simpson is guilty. Although authorities suspect this may just be part of an attempt by Cato to crash at Fred Goldman's place for a while. <laughs> Meanwhile, Simpson Dream Team attorney Alan Dershowitz was back in the news this week, and good lord is he ugly. Take a look at the guy. I mean, this is an ugly, ugly guy. No two ways about it. An ugly character. All right. In Paris, pop star Michael Jackson has announced a deal with a Saudi prince to launch an international chain of, quote, virtual reality wedding chapels. This makes this the most normal thing Michael Jackson has ever done. And in a recent interview, tenor Luciano Pavarotti says that he is so in love with his new girlfriend that he likes to run nude on the beach with her. Read all about this in this month's issue of Things That Make Me Vomit. <laughs> that picture makes me vomit as well. Well, last year, wildfires throughout the western United States destroyed an estimated 50,000 acres and over 300 homes. Now many fear that with the new Republican-controlled Congress cutting the budgets of key federal agencies, such as the Forest Service and Army Corps of Engineers, fires this summer could be even more devastating. Here with a comment. Well, filming has finally begun in the long-awaited life story of Evita Peron, starring pop singer Madonna. According to its producers, the film is 100% historically accurate, except for the part where Mrs. Peron has group sex with the Houston Rockets. <laughs> a Minnesota woman has patented a batting helmet that she designed for her daughters that features a cutout in the back for a ponytail to poke through. The helmet will be marketed to young girls and damn dirty hippies. <laughs> this winter, the state of Maine had a record 260 snowmobile accidents, most of them caused by drinking and speeding. Although, if you're not drinking and speeding, what the hell's the point of riding a damn snowmobile? <laughs> not a lot of fun. In honor of this year's Academy Awards, Carnival Airlines is offering anyone named Oscar a free flight to or from Los Angeles. The airline had tried a similar promotion in the past for the Tony Awards, but according to airline spokesmen, they found that their planes were packed with too many, quote, greasy Italians. <laughs> Three years ago, an 11-year-old British schoolgirl put a message in a bottle and tossed it into the Atlantic Ocean. Well, this week, she was astounded to receive a reply from halfway around the world. Sadly, the reply read, You're 11? What are you wearing? <laughs> Over the years, the... And that's the way it is, folks. Good night and good luck. Weekend Update with Norm MacDonald. Thank you. I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news, our top story tonight. After a search of nearly 18 years, the man known as the Unabomber has apparently been caught. Theodore Kaczynski is described as a genius with degrees in mathematics from both Harvard and the University of Michigan. Well, now perhaps Americans can focus on our real enemy. Fancy book learning. <laughs> Although only one of his victims was from California, Governor Pete Wilson is pushing to have the Unabomber suspect tried in Los Angeles. Also pushing to have the Unabomber tried in Los Angeles, the Unabomber. <laughs> it now appears that the $50 million lawsuit against subway gunman Bernie Getz, brought by one of the men he shot, 
will be heard by an all-minority jury. Attorney for Getz, Darnay Hoffman, says he has advised his clients to carry himself humbly in court, make friendly eye contact with the all-minority jury, and start scraping together $50 million. <laughs> Last week on Larry King Live, Marlon Brando made the shocking statement that Hollywood is, quote, run by Jews. In response, outraged Jewish organizations made it snow in New York in April. For years, Hillary Rodham Clinton has told people that she was named for the first man to climb Mount Everest, Sir Edmund Hillary. But as Esquire magazine recently pointed out, Sir Edmund did not climb Mount Everest until 1953, six years after Hillary was born. However, the First Lady does have a good explanation for the discrepancy. She loves to lie. <laughs> Rap star Hammer is suing the Los Angeles Police Department after he and his entourage were mistakenly handcuffed by police. The most shocking part of this story, Hammer has an entourage. <laughs> Last week, a jailbreak at the Adams County Prison in Pennsylvania ended with four inmates escaping in their underwear. Officials are surprised the escape worked, especially because during the break, the scantily clad prisoners frequently stop to rape each other. <laughs> In the new movie, Mrs. Winterborn, talk show host Ricky Lake plays the part of a young mother-to-be. According to film's producers, Miss Lake was so serious about achieving a realistic pregnant look, she forced herself to lose 30 pounds. <laughs> In uh, Montel Williams' new book, Mountain, Get Out of My Way, the talk show host shares insights on how to set and achieve goals in life. Publisher is expected to be a bestseller, outdoing even his first book, Hair, Get Off of My Head. <laughs> a Nobel Prize winning scientist has been arrested on charges of sexually abusing a 15-year-old boy. Though the arrest really shouldn't come as a big surprise, his Nobel Prize was in child molesting. <laughs> Finally, some good news. According to her doctor, legendary actress Katherine Hepburn is recovering nicely from her recent illness, and they have even upgraded her condition to decrepit. So that's... That's a... That's a nice... That's nice. Well, you don't like her? You don't like Catherine Hepburn, for God's sakes? <laughs> and that's the way it is, folks. Good night. <laughs>
In other show business news, it has been reported that superstar Madonna is pregnant. Although, personally, I find this a bit hard to believe. I mean, uh, Madonna isn't even married. It's like crazy. This week, a New Jersey woman, Rita Gluzman, was charged with hacking her husband to death with an axe, cutting the body into pieces, and having a cousin dump them in a river. According to police, Gluzman learned how to do this by watching the program Martha Stewart Living. <laughs> in a highly unusual ruling, the California State Supreme Court declared this week that O.J. Simpson attorney Alan Dershowitz is, quote, one ugly bastard. <laughs> In sports, distance runner Yuta Pippig set a record by winning her third consecutive Boston Marathon, despite suffering from both her period and diarrhea <laughs> throughout the 26-mile run. In addition, Pippig also set a record for causing the most spectators to make this face <laughs> at a Boston Marathon. And in basketball news, Magic Johnson was suspended for three games and fined $10,000 for bumping official Scott Foster. Said a distraught Johnson after the game, this is the worst thing that has ever happened to me. Last... Thank you, Greg Norman. Well, for the second week in a row, Richard Gere's new film, Primal Fear, was number one at the box office, leading many Hollywood insiders to wonder... Hey, uh, you think that gerbil story is true? <laughs> Magician David Copperfield has announced plans to open his own theme restaurant. The theme? I don't deserve my girlfriend. <laughs> In California, the State Justice Department has endorsed a plan that would update the term for a prostitute's customer from the traditional John to the new, more current-sounding term, Charlie Sheen. <laughs> and finally, this Thursday, businesses around the country will be celebrating the fourth annual Take Our Daughters to Work Day, or as producer Aaron Spelling calls it, Thursday. <laughs> That's all right. You don't have to do that. And that's the way it is, folks. Good night. See you later. Weekend Update with Norm MacDonald. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Norm MacDonald. And now the fake news. Our top story tonight. A former Arkansas banker told the Senate White Com Whitewater Committee this week that he gave Bill Clinton a $20,000 loan as a favor, even though it was, quote, unacceptable banking practice. In response, President Clinton stated that he has no recollection of such a loan, while First Lady Hillary Clinton said, we've never even been to Arkansas. <laughs> In Cincinnati, is, is Cincinnati Reds owner Marge Schott an anti-Semi? Well, it is beginning to look that way. According to a report out today, on the entire Cincinnati Reds team, there is not one Jewish player. <laughs> the U.S. Tobacco Company has announced that between now and December 31, it will donate a portion of its sales, at least $1 million, to the National Volunteer Fire Council. In return, U.S. Tobacco asked that for the rest of the year, everyone pretend that cigarettes don't cause cancer. <laughs> Subway gunman Bernie Getz has apparently come up with a plan to pay off the enormous $43 million judgment against him. His plan? Mug somebody, get shot, sue them. <laughs> Last week, during his latest trial on charges of assisted suicide, Dr. Jack Kevorkian startled a Michigan courtroom when he stood up and shouted, This is a lynching. Everyone turned to look, and sure enough, he just lynched some old guy. 
<laughs> well, in business news, the Ford Motor Company reports a 22% drop in sales for the first quarter. Ford analysts blame the decline on a sluggish economy combined with a sudden upswing in interest rates. Also, their cars blow up. <laughs> Last night, the epic disaster film Twister opened to big box office and some controversy. The Reverend Jesse Jackson has called for a boycott of the movie, claiming that not enough black people in the film are killed by tornadoes. <laughs> Today, I spoke to my mother and I asked her what she wanted for a Mother's Day gift. I told her she could have anything, she's my mom, and uh, she said she wanted my brother Gary to do a weekend update by himself. Well, happy Mother's Day, Mom. And now, weekend update with Norm McDonald's brother Gary. Hey, hey, I'm Gary McDonald, and this is a fake news. Hey, our... Our, our top story tonight, Bill Clinton's testimonial tapes were shown to the Whitewater Investigative Committee. Hey, hey, committee members, remember, when you're done watching the videotape, be kind, rewind, no. <laughs> hey, hey, no. In other stories, Bo Grit ceased, ceased negotiation with the Freeman. Hey, looks like Bo doesn't know, no. Hey. A different guy. Hey, how's that song go? Dude looks like a lady? No. <laughs> God help me, no. Hey, there's one. Look, look. Hey, well, Mr. Alligator, as your dentist, I'll have to recommend flossing. No. Uh, that was really no. No. Hey. Boy, look. Hey, look at that guy. Look at him there. He, he's got a sign. It should say, we'll work for food. No. <laughs> he looks like he needs help. No. Help. Hey, the Beatles. No. Beetle Bailey. No. Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? No. Hey. Hey, you know, home. Home's where your mom, she makes you practice update in front of the mirror. But it's a lot different when you're on TV because your insides are on fire and you feel like you ate a fork. No. Hey. Hey. Fork, mork. No. <laughs> Easy, Gary. Hey, we're we're, we're going to get you out of here and in a safe place there, buddy. Don't hey, worry about it. Hey, hey safe place. Then we shouldn't go to Detroit. No, help me. Uh, there's my brother, Gary, folks. Gary McDonald. In overseas news, an attempt to lift the ban on gays serving in the British Armed Forces has been defeated in Parliament. This raises a difficult legal question. How do you exactly tell if a British guy is gay? <laughs> a berry found only in the Amazon rainforest and commonly used as an aphrodisiac is the base ingredient for Josta, the new soft drink Pepsi is marketing to teenagers. According to a Pepsi spokesman, the new drink will solve a problem that has long baffled researchers. How to make teenagers more horny. <laughs> Last week, the United Artists Cinema Chain agreed to make 300 of its t theaters more accessible to people with disabilities. Also, disabled patrons will no longer have to buy an extra ticket for their wheelchair. <laughs> That's good. How time they... Overturn that barbaric practice. Okay. In his controversial new book, Bad As I Want to Be, Chicago Bulls forward Dennis Rodman says that the NBA is, quote, 50% sex. Jeez, man, I got to stop leaving at halftime. And in other show business news, Macaulay Culkin called police after his father, Kit Culkin, slapped him for not cleaning his room. Officers raced to the scene and immediately joined in, slapping Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> well,
Well, tomorrow is Mother's Day, and the results of the weekend update, Why My Mom is the Best, essay contests are in. First place goes to Jennifer Hunter of Morristown, New Jersey, while last place was a tie between Eric and Lyle Menendez. <laughs> Fake news, our top story tonight in court documents made public this week, independent counsel Kenneth Starr told a federal judge that Hillary Clinton is now a, quote, central figure in the Whitewater criminal probe. Reacting to the news, President Clinton called the investigation a partisan witch hunt, vowing, quote, if the first lady is somehow convicted and has to go to jail, I will do everything in my power to wait two weeks to start dating. <laughs> Meanwhile, FBI Director Louis Free said this week that Attorney General Janet Reno might have a conflict of interest in her investigation of Democratic fundraising. Free also pointed out that Reno might have a conflict of interest between her X and Y chromosomes. <laughs> There was some good news for Michael Kennedy this week when the parents of the teenage babysitter with whom he had a five-year affair decided not to pursue criminal charges. However, a lawyer for the babysitter's family called Kennedy a, quote, sick, pathetic individual, while the county district attorney described him as a, quote, alcoholic cradle robber. The only kind words came from his uncle, Senator Ted Kennedy, who called him, quote, an inspiration. <laughs> Real estate mogul Donald Trump announced this week that after three and a half years of marriage, he is seeking a divorce from wife Marla Maples. According to Trump, Maples violated part of their marriage agreement when she decided to turn 30. That was unacceptable. At their annual convention this week, board members of the National Rifle Association narrowly elected actor Charlton Heston vice president of the powerful gun lobby. According to Heston, his first priority will be a push to legalize the hunting of, quote, damn dirty apes. <laughs> In Alabama, a new state law will dramatically increase the penalty for bouncing a check. Note to self cancel summer vacation plans in Alabama, find state more accommodating to the Norm McDonald lifestyle. <laughs> On Wednesday, world chess champion Gary Kasparov tied Deep Blue, the IBM supercomputer that can examine 200 million positions per second in the fourth game of their six-game series. Earlier in the week, Kasparov admitted he made a catastrophic blunder in game two when he failed to force a draw by moving rook to e7, opting instead for a Karo Khan defense that soon transposed into a Pribble defense, which, after Deep Blue moved bishop to e7, gave him the advantage with his knight position. With all due respect to Mr. Kasparov, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> This week, this week, New York Senator Al D'Amato repeated his claim that during the Second World War, Switzerland aided the Nazi war effort and helped launder money stolen from Jews. These charges are the results of a lengthy, thorough investigation by the senator, which proves, quote, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that New York has lots and lots of Jewish voters and no Swiss voters. <laughs> Well, last week in Cleveland, the rock group Crosby, Stills, and Nash was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In addition, a special Lifetime Achievement Award was presented to David Crosby's liver. <laughs> Congratulations, David Crosby's liver. In other music news, Paul McCartney will take part in his first live online chat, May the 17th, 
And a record two and a half million calls have already come in from people hoping to have an actual moment of contact with the former Beatle. Although it should be noted that two million of those calls came from Ringo Starr. So Proceedings are set to begin Tuesday against Air Force Lieutenant Kelly Flynn, the nation's first female B-52 pilot. Flynn is accused of conducting an adulterous affair with a married man, as well as having a brief fling with a second airman, and then lying about it. An Air Force prosecutor called her, quote, a sexual predator, while her commanding officer called her a, quote, lying sex addict. Meanwhile, President Clinton called her. <laughs> Earlier this year, the Liga Group paid out more than $750 million in a court settlement when it was admitted that its cigarettes are addictive. And this week, the tobacco company unveiled its new warning label. It reads, warning, don't try to sue us. We don't have any money left. <laughs> Yesterday, the House Budget Committee approved an outline of the deal between President Clinton and congressional leaders to balance the budget. But both sides caution it is not set in stone. In order to become official, of course, it must still be approved by this Chinese guy here. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a... Oh, boo, what the hell? <laughs> no reason to boo anything. It was reported this week that Simpson prosecutors Marsha Clark and Chris Darden often passed sexually explicit notes back and forth at the trial. Notes which discussed each other's, quote, turn-ons. And according to the notes, both Dar Darden and Clark are turned on by the same freakish thing, Alan Dershowitz. <laughs> Meanwhile, O.J. himself may have some explaining to do for months. He has denied hiding financial assets, including valuable sports mementos, from the Brown and Goldman families. But earlier today, Simpson pal A.C. Cowlings was stopped as he tried to leave the country. In the backseat of his Bronco, police found O.J.'s Heisman Trophy, disguised with a tiny fake beard. <laughs> According to prosecutors in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Henrietta Collins, a 90-year-old widow, was bilked out of her life savings by the trustees of her estate. Note to self, forget trying to bilk Henrietta Collins out of her life savings. Some dirty bastard got there first. <laughs> This week, talk show host Kathy Lee Gifford addressed published reports that her husband had an extramarital affair, saying, quote, Frank did and always does what is right. Kathy Lee's statement has been widely interpreted as a public admission that her husband beats her. <laughs> In San Francisco last week, a birthday party for one of the area's leading political figures attended by the city's mayor, sheriff, and members of the board of supervisors culminated with a performance in which a dominatrix used a razor blade to carve a satanic star into the back of her male partner, then urinated on him before finally sodomizing the man with a liquor bottle. After learning of the incident from press reports, San Franciscans expressed shock and outrage that the liquor bottle was not recycled. In his new film, Legionnaire, action star Jean-Claude Van Damme will join the French Foreign Legion. In the film, Van Damme is a playboy in 1920s Paris who flees a mob boss after falling in love with the man's mistress. Also, although it doesn't say anything here about it, uh, I'll bet there's plenty of, uh, of kicking. <laughs> Tonight we are proud to present a new feature on Weekend Update in their own words.
As you remember last month in the televised town meeting on kids and drugs, President Clinton moved Peter Jennings and the audience as well when he said, quote, I've received many letters from five-year-old kids around the country telling me that they are frightened and asking for my help. Earlier this week, the White House released the text of some of these letters. Walker D. of Connecticut, a five-year-old child, writes, Dear Mr. President, when the Republicans are finished wasting taxpayer money on their whitewater witch hunt, perhaps they can join you in your efforts to protect Medicare and the environment and to expand the earned income tax credit. P.S. Paula Jones was asking for it. Here's one from, from Elizabeth A. of Long Island who wrote, Dear President Clinton, Newt Gingrich is a bad, bad man. Also, Paula Jones was asking for it. In their own words. <laughs> Under a new law passed by the State Assembly, effective next year, Michigan will set aside an allotment of hunting licenses for blind people. <laughs> this after years of relentless lobbying by deer. <laughs> they... Good news for Hawaii, next year the state will receive $20 million in federal funds to help teach poor children how to read. Oh. Note to self, swindle poor Hawaiians out of $20 million by pretending to be a guy who teaches reading. <laughs> Note to self, before I start... Also, learn to read. <laughs> that will help give the scam what we like to call credibility. <laughs> That's a big word. A new survey by the Washington Post reports that D.C. Mayor Marion Barry's popularity among city residents has dropped to its lowest point in five years. However, Mayor Barry insists he has no interest in polls, or for that matter, anything else that isn't crack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's no interest in it. <laughs> How good are polls going to do it? Finally, reports out of Germany continue to indicate that David Hasselhoff is a major recording star in that country, where his concerts routinely sell out and his albums turn platinum. Which, once again, proves my old theory. Germans love David Hasselhoff. <laughs> and it's been fun, folks. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, I'm Norm MacDonald. And now, the fake news. Our top story tonight, just days after winning the New Hampshire primary, Pat Buchanan has become the target of savage attacks within the Republican Party. On a positive note, however, he did pick up the enthusiastic endorsement of Bill Clinton, the President of the United States of America. Can't get much higher than that. In Colorado this week, Bob Dole warned that if Pat Buchanan is the Republican nominee, the party might lose both the presidency and control of Congress. In response, Buchanan warned that if anyone other than himself becomes president, Blacks will retain the right to vote. <laughs> Six of one, half dozen of another. During an interview two weeks ago, Bob Dole said to a reporter, quote, whoever wins in New Hampshire will probably be the Republican nominee. When approached by the reporter for a quote following his stunning loss Tuesday, Dole locked himself in his campaign bus and pretended to be asleep. A new development in the O.J. Simpson civil trial this week, according to sworn testimony, Nicole Brown Simpson had told her therapist that she was afraid of getting beaten by O.J. Simpson. Asked why he didn't report this earlier, the therapist said, I was afraid of getting beaten by O.J. Simpson. <laughs> I said getting beaten, and that may have hurt a little. little. Following a new outbreak of the Ebola virus in Africa last week, health officials have issued the following warning to those who may have come in contact with the virus. Drink plenty of flu fluids and stay the hell away from me.
Well, this week, world chess champion Gary Kasparov defeated an IBM computer in their six-game chess series. Experts are calling the encounter between chess wizard and supercomputer historic because, for the first time ever, it brought together both geeks and nerds. <laughs> And this week, the leaders of Bosnia, Serbia, and Croatia averted a threat to the peace accord by agreeing that suspected war criminals will be arrested only if they are among the 52 already indicted. The remaining war criminals will be allowed to continue as staff workers for Pat Buchanan. <laughs> and in the state of Washington, deaths from heroin hit record levels during 1995. Sorry, crack, it just wasn't your year. For the last few weeks, a couple of fans have been uh, filling my mailbox with uh, sweaters and cakes. So, in an effort to get them off my back, here once again are the president and chairman of the Norm Macdonald Fan Club, Lucian Callow and Fagan. Oh, oh. Well, television history will be made this week when film legend Elizabeth Taylor appears as herself on all four CBS Monday Night sitcoms. It's part of the network's new campaign, Must Eat TV. <laughs> she enjoys eating. Well, the Learning Annex in New York is offering a new course to teach women how to smoke cigars. The fee to enroll in the class is $100. The fee to watch the class is $200. A shocking crime in Boonell, Florida, where a 92-year-old man in a nursing home has been charged with sexually assaulting an 85-year-old woman. A nurse who witnessed the attack has not stopped vomiting. <laughs> in St. Louis, archaeologists will use special radar on nearby landfills in an effort to find the 70-foot axle from a Ferris wheel which was the centerpiece of the 1904 World's Fair. Or so the Germans would have us believe. <laughs> and finally... In Fall City, Nebraska, John Lauder has been sentenced to death for attempting to kill three people in what prosecutors called a plot to silence a cross-dressing female who had accused him of rape. Now, this might strike some of viewers as harsh, but I believe everyone involved in this story should die. <laughs> okay, and that's the way it is, folks. Good night. Thanks. I'm Norm MacDonald, and now the fake news. Our top story tonight, charged by critics with failure to prepare an exit strategy for Bosnia, a defiant President Clinton today insisted that he has one ready. Should the situation deteriorate, he will have all 20,000 troops airlifted to England and smoking pot within 24 hours. <laughs> Last week, the president vetoed a Republican bill to balance the budget, and he used a pen that belonged to former President Lyndon Johnson. Clinton has also been working his way through John F. Kennedy's vast supply of condoms. <laughs> In New York this week, while rehearsing for his upcoming HBO special, pop star Michael Jackson collapsed on stage and was rushed to Beth Israel Hospital. Weekend Update has obtained this exclusive photo. <laughs> While in the hospital, Michael Jackson had his room specially decorated with two huge photos of Shirley Temple. But don't get the wrong idea here. Michael Jackson is 
a homosexual pedophile. Who is In business news, Chrysler has alleged that former chairman Lee Iacocca gave away classified documents to other corporations. According to a spokesman, Chrysler is deeply concerned that other manufacturers have learned the secrets of building really crappy cars. <laughs> Dr. Jack Kevorkian and seven associates have unveiled new guidelines for doctors in planning physician-assisted suicide. Rule number one, get paid in advance. <laughs> in a surprise move, O.J. Simpson has offered to give an interview to CNN with, quote, absolutely no ground rules. But interviewers Greta Van Sustern and Roger Cossack have asked for one. Don't kill us. New York Governor George Pataki this week announced a plan to cut state scholarship aid to college students who do not maintain at least a C average. Sadly, the students hurt most by these cuts will be the idiots. <laughs> Across the Great Plains, harsh weather and hungry bull weevils are the cause of one of the worst cotton harvest in years. Or so the Germans would have us believe. <laughs> Native Americans in upstate New York are trying to uh, I'm sorry. Native Americans in upstate New York are trying to block plans to build a Kmart on the site of a Mohican burial ground. In addition, they were upset to learn that sales at this particular Kmart will be announced Attention Kmart Savages. Doctors at the University of Pennsylvania Hospital are hard at work developing a new operation to remove an appendix without anesthesia. The operation is exactly the same as the one with anesthesia, with one key difference. It hurts like a bastard. <laughs> The New York Public Interest Research Group has unveiled its 10th annual list of dangerous toys for the upcoming uh, Christmas season. Topping the list this year, baby's first circular saw. <laughs> this week in Minneapolis, the Minnesota Obesity Center officially opened. Its goals to find ways to identify behaviors that lead to obesity. Also, it's a good place to meet fat chicks. <laughs> you know, many of the nation in Connecticut, a mailman on his route was bitten and dragged by a Rottweiler that held on even after police shot it five times. Officers rescued the shaken mailman who finished his rounds, went back to the post office and shot ten people. <laughs> And uh, that's the way it is. Enjoy your Sunday, folks. Thanks.